today I'm back in the garden, but it's not my garden. It's someone else's garden, a beautiful permaculture, natural garden that has an absolutely majestic fig tree. The only problem though is this fig tree is completely riddled with fig borers. Fig borers attack the base of the tree. They survive on the bark and the wood, meaning over time the tree becomes weakened to the point that it can actually fall over because of the lack of stability and support in the wood or it just becomes too weak over time. So in this video I'm going to show you the, what the damage looks like from fig borers. I'm going to show you what the borer actually looks like and then we're going to go through some of the techniques to actually clear it out. It's very difficult to get rid of permanently but some of the measures we're going to put in place will prevent it from causing a huge amount of damage quickly, we'll prolong the damage, get a little bit more life out of this tree before we make some longer term decisions. So first of all, let's look at the symptoms of infestation of fig borer. The very first thing that's going to give away that you have fig borers is a cut like this. You can see this has got a beautiful T shaped to it at the bottom. Let me just clear that out. A little bit of stuff in it. Bottom slit, top slit. Now here if I feel this is pretty solid so what we have here is we have eggs that are busy laying or have been hatched the larva are making their way into the trunk of the tree so with this we'll apply a certain technique which is slightly different to the others but this is the very first sign that you have a problem when it comes to fig borers so what you want to do when you see the tea in the in the trunk is you want to come and you want to cut that out. So you'll see right over there is a brown section and this is where the, the, the young lava is busy working its way through. So what you want to do is cut it out up until the point of you, you're not seeing brown. You can see they're still brown. You need to go a little bit deeper, a little bit deeper. And now we don't see brown anymore. Now here where we don't see brown, we just need to give it a quick squirt with neem oil just to make sure if there are any eggs there that they'll get zapped. And then what we want to do is close this up with a putty. Whether it's normal putty, it's grafting putty, you can use wood glue, you can use cement, you can use anything to close this up, but make sure it is sprayed first that you've removed any signs of brown or damage from the trunk. If you do this from a young age and you're observant for those tea slits in your trunk, then you have a really good chance and possibly save your tree before it reaches this point. The second and more severe case of identification of fig borer is sap running down the tree and this bark substance that actually comes out of cracks in the tree like this. If you pull it away you'll see it's just all mucky mushy stuff. If you see this you've got an even bigger problem because what's happened is the larvae have turned into the point that they're actually huge and we then need to get those treated but if you can see not sure if you can, there's a little white speckle over there and that is a tiny little lava. There is a definitely a bigger one in here, but if you see running of sap down the, the trunk of the tree and you see bark or this orangey substance coming out of the tree, then you have a problem. And then finally, and the most severe case where when you see this, you have more than likely reached the point of no return, your tree has actually been completely ring barked. This you can see all the way through, it's completely gone. This is the base, the bark of the tree, the stem. There is no cambium layer here left at all. And if we go back just a little bit and we look at the base of the tree down here, you'll see how hollow this is. I can stick my finger in there. All of this around here is completely gone. 
So there is still a little bit of life in this trunk. It's going to be very difficult to resurrect this one because of how severe it is. But this one next to us on this side where there is damage, but we can still you know, work with what we have. So I can now see up here that there is, without a doubt, another one sitting in here. So if we break it out, you see all this muck, this yellow, cut that so that's good that's good bark so we'll seal that one up but we need to get up here so we can try and see it's going to cut that off so we need to try and find out where this guy is hiding because there is a whole bunch of muck inside here to clean all of this out i can feel inside of this is just all mush and breaking apart so this it looks like i'm hacking the tree and i am but this is the only way we stand a chance of saving it we've got to get all of this out and we've got to find where this big lava is there we go just found it so i've just found it i'm going to just carry on with the slit Pull the bark open. You see this huge thing. You see this pinches. There we go. It, see how it grabbed onto my knife. So what you don't want to do, I would advise you to not put this in your hand. You just saw how it grabbed onto the knife with the pinches and pulled itself out of the hole with the pinches that it has. So don't put it in your hand unless you want to have quite a pinch. So there we go. Now you can see there's a, the knife is fitting in there, a pretty big hole. So what we want to do now is we just want to continue cleaning this up and we'll do it with a bit more finesse a little bit later. We just want to actually get all the beetles out but you can see, if I take a little cut here, all of this cambium is still alive. And that's a good sign. So we don't want to rip this off. What we're going to do is we're going to spray this hole with neem oil. Soak it up really, really nicely. And then we're going to close this up with a hessian bag. But in the interim, I'm going to just go around and clean the rest of the base out. And then I'll come back and we'll do some spraying and wrap up the tree. So after digging around, it's not looking good for this tree. We just took a massive one out of the trunk up at the top here. And if you look at the length of this blade, um, it's still mush at the bottom there, but I mean, there's so much of this knife going in here. So they're all in this trunk. And if we look down, further down, you can see the whole trunk is absolutely riddled with them. So at this point, it becomes really, really difficult to control them. However, what we are going to do, just for the sake of maybe getting another season or two, is just spray the inside of the trunk with neem oil. And what the neem oil will do is, for any of the lava that are still there, that's busy feeding, it'll do a little something to them. As I spray, you can see all the gunk just coming out. So all the holes that we've made up at the top, down at the bottom here, we want to spray all of that. And then the final thing we have to do is, once we've sprayed it, we've cleaned it out, um, taken all of the worms out and cleaned up all these little tea cuts, is we need to wrap this base with shade cloth or a hessian bag. I'm just going to take these side shoots off just so I can get the trunk on the Hessian bag around. Then what I'm going to do is take the bag, wrap it around about a meter of the trunk in height. You can wrap it pretty well. And then why we are wrapping it is to prevent any more of these bugs coming in and laying eggs on the stems. 
But secondly, we want to prevent the bugs and the larvae that are in here from maturing and flying out so they can mate and come back and lay more larva. So it's twofold, stopping as a barrier to ex to entrance and then also stopping as a barrier for exit once they have matured. So put a couple of layers of hessian bag, tie it up, and make sure that when you do that, that at the base you dig the soil away and that when you do this, I'm just doing a demonstration so you can see, make sure that you lay a portion of the bag on the floor like this and then cover this with the soil just so that if there are any lava or pupa that are in the soil that they can't make their way onto the trunk because you've left a little gap. So flare out the bag at the bottom, wrap around the trunk and you'll get a little bit more protection from, from your tree. So that was not the outcome I was looking for. I was really hoping that the infestation wouldn't be so severe, so deep into the core of the trunk and so far around the circumference of the base that it's going to cause more damage to actually try and save it than to just start again. But we're going to give it a go. We've taken out what, we've can, what we can, um, sprayed it with neem oil inside, wrap it up and then we just got to let, let nature take its course here. What you can do is on a monthly basis from now on, just remove the hessian bag, have a look inside. If you're still seeing this yellow orange gunk coming out, it means you have more. Go in, stick the wire up, clear it out, spray it again, close it up. It's just gonna be a little bit of a continuous cycle until the point that your tree either recovers or it just doesn't have enough strength and it gives in. Unfortunately, like I said, this level of damage when you come to action at this late is very, very hard to correct. But silver lining, I showed you the tea cuts of the first signs of infestation of the fig borer. Be observant. If you see those tea cuts, take action, take action quickly, dig them up, close it up, wrap the base of your trunk in hessian, spray it out with neem oil and make sure that you have a very close eye because once those, those borers start getting bigger and into the core of your trunk, it becomes very, very difficult. So keep a close eye and hopefully you can keep them at bay. If you learned something from this video, please share it out and subscribe to my journey where I'm going to continue to help people where I can. And if you've got any questions about the fig borer, anything that I did, drop them below and I'll definitely get back to you.